FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome, and you are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is May 12th, 2020. Well, we've got all sorts of things blowing up all over the world. Nobody can even keep track of it anymore. So we'll try to just give you a blow-up report of the day for the three most important things blowing up on a particular day. And today, we've got our good friend Gary S. Wagner and uh, Gary and I have known each other, God, for years now, Gary. And, well, your website uh, is a must reading. Just tell us where to find you right now, Gary. Uh, that would be the gold forecast, one word, dot com. All right. The gold and forecast. It's to, and it's great to be here, by the way. Hey, always. And uh, look, we want your questions. We want to hear what you think about it. What do you think the top three blow ups of the day are today? There's so many you can't keep track of them, but uh, we want to know your opinion. So email us kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. So, Gary, we got more troubles than Job here in the world. <laughs> we got the troubles of Job on steroids. I mean, you can't even. You can't even make this stuff up. You can't even imagine what the heck is going to blow up next. And, you know, I know you keep uh, meticulous records and charts of what's happening in the world. So just briefly tell us, tell us what's going on. Well, I mean, first of all, we are in unprecedented times. We have not seen the world experience this type of global pandemic. It's not an epidemic anymore, but a pandemic really since the Spanish flu. Now, don't get me wrong. The Spanish flu killed one out of three people. Much worse. Five. Hundred million people lasted two years. But that was back at a time when they didn't have modern medicine. The fact of the matter is, is that not only is this a occurrence of a pandemic, but there are many who think that the virus itself uh, wasn't formed by nature. And what I'm finding interesting, very interesting, is the fact that it happens to hit different uh, ethnic or demographic groups differently. So are they, it begs to ask the question, is it a virus that targets specific types of genes? And if so, what are the implications of that? That's the first thing. The second thing is the unprecedented uh, actions by the Federal Reserve. I've never heard them say unlimited quantitative easing in the same sentence. And that to me is scary as heck. And then the third thing is, I believe rightfully so in intent, uh, the government came and created some fiscal aid in order to help the little guy. In other words, for the first time, yeah. we heard that they were going to do kind of a bottom up theory rather than a trickle down theory. And so they released what? 620 Six something billion. No, trillions. Uh, Six, I, uh, I think the P PPP, well, the stimulus. Oh, 600 billion on when PPP, the PPP yeah. program, correct. And throw in the stimulus and the SBA program, and you're looking uh, upwards of over a trillion. What we are looking at is a budget deficit that is never appeared in modern history. We have spent more money trying to combat this, and we have a greater debt than America has ever experienced. And so my question is, the virus will end. At some point, they'll find a vaccine. At some point, it will kind of run its course. At that point, how does the government dig itself out of this tremendously deep financial hole that it has dug? And as I said, don't get me wrong, I think the intent was right. But for example, with the PPP, from what I understand, it's not helping the mom and pop restaurant. It's not helping the little grocery store. Um, because what they did 
is they ended up giving it to these large corporations who got through a loophole. Yes. One of the, you know, one of the loopholes was that you couldn't have more than 500 employees. So Chile sent in a, uh, 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 loan application and said, but wait, we've only got 500 per restaurant. Now, they, in fact, did return it. But how many other, I won't say fraudulent, but maybe misuse of this aid has occurred? Oh, and yeah. how much of it's actually gotten to the little guy? Well, Auto Nation, they uh, have every car lot incorporated separately so they put in a hundred different applications and they got 80 million i don't know if they're giving it back either it wasn't intended for these large corporations who have exactly. other sources of capital this is a effectively it starts out as a loan but if you retain employees it becomes a grant, a grant. and therefore yes. it's a giveaway now what i will tell you is i had a facebook group and i kind of became a little mini expert in this stuff and I got my little dose of stimulus, too. I will tell you that. And okay. uh, it really did help because a couple of months we just had no revenue, zero. Between uh, mid-February and uh, March, April, we had no revenue and would have had to fire people. So th the first batch went to all the cronies and two sets of cronies. The right. big corporations parading as mom and pops. And then you also had larger small businesses that had lending relationships with the too big to fail banks. So what the right. banks did effectively was use this as a backdoor bailout for their loans. So they would give it to people that owed them money, businesses that owed them money first, because the more money they give those companies, the more likely they are to get their loans repaid. <clears throat> They're going to avoid defaults. So all of that took place in step one but there was some money i know some people who got ppp money from phase one after that nobody expected them to refinance it to replenish the fund but congress right, actually right. did so the second stage the 310 another billion, 300 billion yeah. yeah that mostly found its way to the mom and pops and i believe there's going to be another go round here because Look, some businesses will go out of business. There's no doubt. I right. think that number is going to be a lot less than anybody expected for the simple reason that uh, being in small business, you know, I know I've been in small business my whole life. It's the art of holding on through adversity, you know, maxing out the cards, not paying your withholding tax, whatever it takes to survive, because you know that if the company fails, then you're up the creek then you're going to have to find something else to do. But again, some companies will close, no doubt. But that number yeah. is going to be less than anticipated. Don't forget, unlike 08, 09, where the inf unemployment rate was far smaller, um, those people were laid off. You know, we went up 12, 13 percent, all different ways of measuring it. Who knows? But to say that it was 12 percent U6 unemployment or was it you, you won unemployment. Um, mm -hmm. At that point, those people actually lost their jobs. Most of the people who are out of work now have been furloughed to be rehired back, at least a significant portion of them. But we are going to have massive bankruptcies. Neiman Marcus, J.C. Penney, the retail apocalypse continues. But that was a trend that was going on before this. It's just exactly. going to be exacerbated. So you've got some uh, charts. We're going to load these charts into the video and we'll have them up on the audio as a bonus. But just tell us what the charts are telling you. Well, before I go into the charts, there's one other thing that I, I, I do want to raise. As far as the PPP loans go, I did get a nice letter from my bank mm -hmm. that said, thank you very much for applying for your loan. It is in process. However, we have been so overwhelmed, it's highly unlikely that we'll be able to process it. Mm -hmm. what, scares, what scares me the most right now is that we had a day yesterday where, or Friday where the jobs report came out. The estimate was 22 million and the unemployment estimate, I believe, was between 15 and 16 percent. Extremely dismal numbers. I think all of us would agree that yes. in any other circumstance, this would be something dire. But yet 
when those numbers came out, because they forecast 22 million and it, and it came in at 20 million, gold tanked. It went right. down twenty dollars. The other thing with the unemployment rate is there are those out there that are saying it is 16 to 17 percent and it will go to 20. And this is what scares me. During the Great Depression, the unemployment rate was 24.9. If we're at 20 percent, then we're very, very close to that kind of catastrophic um, scenario. Oh, yeah. Agreed. You know. Agreed. And, you know, the states are taking the hit. The states are insolvent. A lot of uh, a lot of issues. I don't disagree with it. And I think the deficit, all the money sloshing around here will uh, probably make the stock market go up in the long run and maybe make this thing less long lived than it would have been. But this is a case of both the cure to the uh, pandemic of lockdown and the mm -hmm. cure to the to the damage that the lockdown did unlimited Fed liquidity. Both right. cures are going to be far worse than the underlying diseases that they were designed to uh, thwart or bring under control. And we'll be living with the results of this for uh, decades, no doubt. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Arcana Corporation is on the verge of bringing the world's highest grade silver mine into production. The Revenue Virginius Mine in Colorado has proven improbable silver reserves grading nearly 37 ounces per ton silver with an all-in sustaining production cost of only US $8 per ounce of silver. The mine is fully permitted with infrastructure already in place and the company has announced they plan to commence production in 2020. Achieving successful production usually results in a significant upward share price re-rating on the Lasan curve. Arcana trades under the ticker AUN in Toronto and AUNFF in New York. To learn more, go to arcana.com. That's A U R C A N A.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Absolutely no doubt. Now, in terms of the technical studies that I've, I've brought for our viewers today, there's two main ones that I want to focus on. The first one that I will send you takes a look uh, at a very, very long term historical data set. And what it does is it marks when QE1 started, QE2, QE3, which was what they called that twist. It wasn't really right. a Operation QE twist. anymore. Yeah. Uh, and then when they tapered. And what we can see from that, obviously, is that when they implemented uh, QE1, we had gold sitting at around seven, eight hundred dollars. It shot up. Equity shot up. It's the only perceivable set of circumstances where you have equities and gold running in tandem to the upside. And so what you'll also see is there's a point mid 2011 when gold topped at 1920, but the stock market kept on going. That's unusual. And the chart that I'm going to send also will show you when we started QE infinity. And so my question is, will we see the same type of reaction from market sentiment and market participants as the Fed begins to flood America with money because the dollar's been strong and it's been strong in light of them defacing the value of the currency. Um, of course, the Fed doesn't print money, the Treasury does, but the Fed is the one that implements it by creating this huge asset sheet, which, by the way, has swelled now what to uh, an additional three trillion dollars. Yeah. And so we've got this tremendous debt that your son and my sons and their kids will be burdened with 20 years down the road. And so that chart will illustrate the kind of effect it has, but whether or not it's a lasting effect. Yeah. The second the second chart that we're going to look at is a simple uh, daily chart, which shows what gold has done, let's say, for the last couple of months. And what we have seen is really the market trading sideways and it's trading within a not a narrow range, but a defined range. Uh, 1788 on the top and the bottom I'm looking at at around uh, 1670, somewhere around there. Mm hmm. 
And so those are the two things we really want to focus on, because in my opinion, gold should be higher than it is. Yeah, no doubt. And that's that's been the story of our lives for almost the past decade, Gary. And, you know, uh, but uh, but the fact is, for whatever reason, because they sterilized the money last time, put it in the uh, excess uh, reserves on deposit with the Fed and got it up to a couple trillion. So and then paid out bonuses. Effectively, the people never got it. But this time they are getting hundreds of billions. The big guys are still getting bailed out. But I think the lesson that the Congress learned from the last bailout is if you don't take care of Main Street, they're going to vote your asses out of office. They don't vote. They're not going to vote for you. And that's absolutely correct. Right. I think that they took a different approach, but they came up with almost the same result in that it will be interesting to see when the numbers come out. What percentage of these bailout funds went to large corporations Mm -hmm. and which ones went to the ones that really needed it? The single owner restaurants, the mom and pop grocery stores. These are the people that are going to go bankrupt because if a big company goes bankrupt and the stockholders lose a little bit of money, it's the employees I feel sorry for, not the cats at the top of the market that maybe don't get their bonus. And last time, what really annoyed me is they funneled out all of this money and rather than using the money to invest in projects that would put people to work, what did they do? They bought stock back. Exactly. And I came up with uh, Lutz's taxpayer bailout bill of rights. All right. Right, I had about 10 things on them. But number one is that if you come and you take money from the Fed, top five executives of your company immediately are fired. And all bonuses, 50 percent of all bonuses paid out in the past three years are clawed back. Number two is no more stock buybacks. Number three, you're not allowed to lobby any level of government because you're effectively using our money to lobby the federal government. And then there were a number of other things in there that I thought would have gone a long way. Some of them actually found their way into the final bill um, in terms of not allowing share buybacks during the course of the loan and a year after. There was a number of things. So I don't know if I'm the genius that came up with it and the congressman took it. What really gets me is I know that uh, Rubio saw my email outraged about uh, about the uh, big companies taking advantage of PPP and the banks were not supposed to play favorites. It was supposed to be like you're online at the deli counter and you take a number and first come, I don't, first I don't say yeah. the woman in the Bentley, you can uh, go your number 100, but you can go in front of number one. But this is exactly what the banks did. And the day after I sent that out or Two days after Rubio announced that he was starting an investigation of the PPP, it's not going to make any difference. But just so you know what happened, maybe we had a small voice in it. I don't really flatter myself uh, of that having that kind of power. But I think a lot of you out there listening combined uh, and this thing was spread all over the place. I think uh, they got the message somewhat, which is why they're giving us money as well. And yeah, we're not Boeing, but uh, the money means more to us than it does to Boeing. And uh, if you've gotten a letter like you got, Gary, from your bank, go to a smaller bank, go to a credit union or go to a community bank because they have been much more equitable in dispersing those funds. And you can use online portals as well. For instance, PayPal is making PPP loans. And so is this company Cabbage, K-A-B-B-A-G-E. And you Mm -hmm. can put in multiple applications because the first one to hit the SBA is the one that gets approved and the others will get ignored and you'll be fine. So and there will be a part three. I think eventually close to half to two thirds of the businesses that need the funds will eventually get it. But there's going to be people that don't get it because the big guys got it ahead of them. That's just life. The way it works. So so what else you got for us here? Well, it's it's what's going to happen in terms of what I tried to call her. And it, I did not uh, coin this, but the new normal, because at some point, whether it's a vaccine or whether it's social distancing, what I want to know is what happens in stage two. 
The coronavirus has pretty much subsided. Now we're dealing with an extreme amount of debt. Uh, bankruptcies, of course, will go through the roof for these little companies. And individuals. Is there any way? Yeah, these yeah individual uh, LLCs or sole proprietorships. Yeah, sure. And how do we plan to take the largest budget deficit in history and alleviate that? The other thing that I'm concerned about is where is the real unemployment rate going to go? Uh, there are those out there, including Janet Yellen, who believe it should hit about 20 percent. And that's an astronomical number. Now, back in the days of FDR, he, well, I'm not so happy he took all the gold from the people, but it allowed them to fill the coffers yes. and Devaluation. put men to work. They built the Hoover Dam. They did infrastructure. What we need is to put our men back to work. And how are we going to do that? Because yeah. we are in a technological society in which the demand for hardcore labor has diminished greatly. We've got all kinds of machines that do the work that men used to. So that's part of the new America. The second part is when will the public as a whole believe it's safe to go to a movie theater, to go well, to a sporting event? I can help you with that. To go to a restaurant. I can help you with that. All right. Now, I'm not necessarily representative here. I never went into a whole fear, fear the virus uh, mindset. So last Monday, we could go last Monday, they reopened uh, Florida phase one other than the county I was in. So, of course, right. I drove up to the county adjoining mine, Palm Beach County, Martin County's north and went to a restaurant. Monday, Monday evening. And there was a right. fair amount of people there, even with the social distancing and all that stuff. None of the staff was wearing masks that I remember. And we all did just fine. And then uh, on Saturday, I went to another restaurant there. Mind you, uh, Palm Beach County's opening up today, phase one. Mm -hmm. And this restaurant, Gary, was packed. And really? they, they honored social distancing in to the uh, letter, but definitely not the spirit. The place was packed. Okay. Nobody's wearing a mask. The help wasn't nobody. And people like what's happening is people are fed up. They're tired of being uh, under house arrest and they're right. just going out there. And I believe because um, look, Hawaii, where you are, barely got hit by this. It didn't warrant a shutdown. We were unscathed. We were definitely yeah. unscathed. You should have never had a shutdown. Florida, you could make an argument, needed some type of uh, of measures, but not a shutdown. Florida, you know, 22 million people, uh, 1,500 deaths, 1,600 deaths. I mean... Statistically, it's it's not meaningful, but in terms of the damage it's done to people's lives, it's very meaningful. But Absolutely. did it warrant a shutdown? I would argue not. And the fact is that uh, right now, I give Florida two weeks. It'll be as if we never had that thing. And as you know from uh, from viral uh, virology, uh, these types of uh, viruses go dormant in hot weather and they die off and they might come back in the fall. They might not. Right, but right. we know a lot more about treating it now. My guess is, okay, I've already made my uh, plane reservations for my birthday yes, in July. I'm off to Vegas and then I'm going to Vancouver. Then I'm going to Alaska. And oh, you're uh, not doing Hawaii, huh? Yeah. Well, not this time. Maybe in okay, the winter, okay. <laughs> maybe next time. But I can't believe that I'm unique, although I do see a lot of empty seats on the planes and I pick my seat wherever I want and great deals, great travel deals. So this thing is going to come back faster than anybody imagines. But that doesn't mean that the pandemic, the financial pandemic is over. That's going to go for years and years. And I don't think we're at risk of an imminent collapse globally. I think we had the collapse. But I think we come back from this where we are. I don't know. I'm not trying to hazard a guess. My feeling is that people crave normalcy and will do everything in their power to make their lives normal again. And if that's if and if that's running up your credit cards uh, to uh, so high regions, then that's what they're going to do to get away. 
my friend Nick, he was at a beach resort in uh, Florida this weekend and it was pretty crowded. The restaurants were crowded. It, people just wanted it to be over with. So that's my opinion on it. I can't say for sure what's going to happen. I don't consider myself to be normal. If I was, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, podcasting and uh, financial stuff and all that. I just would have kept being a lawyer. So who knows? But uh, but that's my guess. Yeah, my, my question is, there have been many instances, Singapore being one, where they opened up too soon and they got that second wave. And so my question is, if we do not do this absolutely properly, will we get that second wave? And if we do, could it be worse than the first one? I doubt it because Georgia opened up 16 days ago. Their cases, hospitalizations have fallen, deaths have fallen. Actual cases might be going up because only because testing, testing 300,000 people a day. Yeah, it's way higher than it ever was. So it's giving a false picture. Yeah. Uh, so much immunity. But in any event, that's going to play itself out one way or the other. And the question is, gold and silver, is that the ultimate insurance policy here? Is there any other way to protect yourself? Well, the interesting thing is, although gold and silver have gone up tremendously this year, I believe we're talking about a 12 percent gain while the stock market came under pressure. Gold will always hold a safe haven allure, and I believe that all investors, all investors should have a percentage of their uh, investment dollars in gold. Now, my recommendation is to buy physical gold and hold it in your bare hands. In other words, keep it safe. Don't put it in a safety deposit box. Hold it, get it from a reputable company, and keep it because it's there for emergencies. I think that When you consider the history of gold, it's the first currency. It's been around for five or 10,000 years. The reason we don't know is written history only goes back 5,000 years. It is the most precious metal on earth. To create more, it comes from a supernova, an exploding star. That's how it gets here. And I just don't see us having a whole lot more. And the beautiful thing about gold is you can reclaim it. You can melt it. You can smelt Mm -hmm. it. And so you can continue to reuse it. The metal that has confounded me to no end, and we're the same age, Mm -hmm. I wish I could go back in time and buy, oh, a half a million ounces of palladium at $100. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know, well, it, it is incredible what that what that particular metal has done. And look at what platinum hasn't done and silver. Platinum Other and silver. Silver went to $11 a couple of months ago. Unheard of. If you would have asked me that at the end of last year, I would have given you 100 to 1 odds that it could never go under 12. Yeah, I, I would, would have agreed with you. Same here. And what you have to realize with silver, over the past nine years, it's lost its allure as an investment metal to all but the uh, hardest hardcore like you and I. So when it crashed, that was an indication of the industrial economy. When gold hits a certain point, it's just going to be, I've used this analogy, you've heard me use it out there many times. It's just like steak and chicken. When steak gets too expensive, when steak is 20 bucks a pound, people go Mm -hmm substitute chicken which is three bucks a pound and that's exactly what is going to happen with silver i know it with every uh, ounce of my body every bone in my body knows it i just don't know when you don't know when but uh there's a guy biederman who used to do a video blog and he used to say silver is the worst investment in the world and it will be the worst investment in the world until one day you wake up and silver will be the best investment in the world. Right, right, That's right. what's going to happen here. And I give him credit well, you, for it. You have to put silver, uh, not in terms of worth, but in utilization uh, to steel or copper. It's mm-hmm. so highly industrially, industrially used. Now, what I find most interesting about silver is it it's it's kind of like the girl that wants to move both ways sometimes it's a safe haven yeah sometimes it's an industrial and it used to be that when gold ran higher silver always ran higher we're seeing a basic disconnect between those two metals they don't tend to run in tandem yeah and so we know that there is something going on but there will always be a use for silver as an industrial metal Yeah, couldn't agree more. And 
And uh, silver tends to lag gold. And uh, when gold hits certain points, and then silver is like the jack in the box, the pressure was there, pops out. Anyway, Gary, we got to run now, but we're going to have the slides attached to the podcast so you'll be able to download them. Really appreciate you coming on the goldforecast.com. Make sure you go there, sign up now. And uh, don't forget, go to our site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Sign up for the free newsletter and our Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz, Facebook page, Financial Survival Network. And we will talk to you real soon, Gary. Thank you very much. And I do have one more comment sure. before we Please. cut off. It'll be a very quick one. I told you about the two charts I'm going to send. I am going to send a third chart. And that third chart is using uh, Elliott Wave and Fibonacci extensions to project my call for where I think gold will end up by the end of the year. Kind of a surprise for everyone. Oh, I like that. I can't wait to see it. That's, so, that's why you throw it in yeah, at the end. Absolutely. Save the best for last, why don't you? So anyway, absolutely. make sure you check out Gary's site, goldforecast.com. And Gary, we will talk to you again real soon. You got it, everyone. Stay healthy, stay happy. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.